What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Fusion Beginner tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to talk more about how to create different shapes and start working in 3D inside of Autodesk Fusion 360. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So in the last video, we talked a little bit about how to navigate around the workspace inside of Autodesk Fusion 360. So I will link to that video in the upper right hand corner, um, but now I want to introduce you to the basic of modeling different kinds of shapes in Fusion 360. And so the way that we're going to do this, the backbone of creating shapes in Fusion is the sketch tool. And so what we do is we use sketch mode to create profiles that we then take into 3D using different 3D tools. So basically what we do is we draw a two-dimensional object and then we use different tools to take that to 3D. So to start off, let's click on the button for create sketch. So if we click on the button for create sketch, the first thing that's going to do is that's going to ask us to select a plane that we want to draw along. And part of the reason for this is because in a 3D space, it can be really hard to draw things flat when you're in a view like this one. And so what this does is this just forces us to select the plane that we're going to draw on. And so in this situation, I want to go ahead and select the plane that's between the green and the red axis, though it doesn't really matter for what we're doing. But in a 3D space, you can see how that gives us a view that's going to be top down. And so from here, what we're going to do is we're going to use the sketch tools in order to draw a 2D shape. And so you might notice these tools are now different than they were a second ago because we were in the solid tab. Well, when we click on sketch mode, this opens up the sketch toolbar and gives you a number of different tools. And so in this particular situation, I just want to draw a very simple shape. So we're just going to go up here and click on the line tool. So you can also tap the L key to activate the line tool. And so if you have snap turned on, you're going to notice that this tool is going to snap to the different grid lines inside of this object. So you can see how as I mouse over these grid lines, it's kind of helping me by moving my mouse or my cursor over those grid lines. So just be aware that it's going to do that. You can turn that on and off using your grid settings down below. But what we want to do is we just want to draw a very simple shape. And so in order to do that, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to single click with the line tool active to set my first point. And so what you're going to notice when you do that is now you've set a base point for this line, meaning the point that this is on is fixed. And now you're going to notice as you move your mouse that you're getting a little indicator on the left hand side showing you the length of the line that you're drawing and you're getting an indicator on the right hand side telling you the angle that you're drawing along. And so for this object, let's keep this very simple and let's just do a, we'll draw a 15 millimeter edge and you can see how I can draw that just by mousing over this point and then clicking where this is 15 millimeters. And then we're going to move our mouse over here and we're just going to click at 15 millimeters again. And so you're going to notice that this is now setting points wherever we click. And so we're just going to move our mouse up and we'll draw a 15 millimeter line here and another 15 millimeter line here. And so just for a second, let's talk about if we wanted to lock, if we wanted to set this to something other than what the snaps are, you'll notice that the distance that we have in here is highlighted meaning that we could type a value in here. So for example, let's say I didn't want this to be 15, I wanted this to be 17 millimeters or something like that. Well, as I move my mouse up, you can see how this doesn't snap to a 17 millimeter distance, but what I can do is I can type in a value of 17, and now you can see how I got a little lock in that box. So the little lock means that we've typed in a value and we're now locked to a value of 17 millimeters. So I can move my mouse wherever I want and you're going to notice that this isn't allowing me to set a distance other than 17. So we have locked that in and now anywhere we click is going to be 17 millimeters from the point that we have selected. If you want to get back out of that, you can just tap the escape key and that'll turn the lock back off. And so for this drawing, all I want to do is I just want to keep going until I get two little tabs in here and a little in like this. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to close this in. So I'm going to move my mouse down to this bottom point and then I'm going to click right here in order to close this in. 
And so now you're going to notice that if I zoom in on this or if I look at this closer, this now has a blue shading on the inside. Well, the blue shading indicates that this is a closed shape. And that's going to be very important when you're working with the solid tools because you need your faces or your shapes to be closed in order to work with the solid tools inside of Fusion 360. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on the button for finish sketch because this sketch is now being this sketch has now been drawn to the way that I want it to be. So we're going to click on the button for finish sketch in order to finish that. And so now if we go back into the Fusion 360 workspace and you can click on the home button if you want to to get this back in a 3D view. You could also use the orbit tool by holding the shift key and the middle mouse button in order to fly around this as well. But now if you look at this, you can see how this is showing up in our 3D space as a sketch. If I click on it, it selects the whole thing. So if I click on this face, it selects the object that we've drawn in here. This is also going to show up in your sketches folder on the left hand side. And you can turn that on and off by clicking on the little eye button right here. Well now what we want to do is now that we've drawn this sketch, this is going to act as a profile that we're going to extrude into 3D. And so in order to do that, we're going to use the extrude tool. And you can see how when we mouse over this, this gives us a little bit of a um, definition of what this tool does. But basically what this tool does is this will take this face, it'll move it in three dimensions, but it'll keep the original face in here and it'll fill in lines so that this becomes a shape with depth. And so in order to do this, all we want to do is we just want to go into our solid tools and click on the extrude option. And so when we click on that tool, you can see how that brings up a toolbar on the right hand side of your page. That toolbar is going to contain all the different options for different things you can do with the extrude tool. And so right now this came up as having that profile selected automatically. If it wasn't, so if we were to just look at it like this, you can see how there's an option in here for profile where you can select the profile. So we could just click on select and then click on this face to select this if it's not selected automatically. And so I don't want to get too far into these options right now. We can talk about those a little bit later in a future video. But what I want to point out is when you use this tool, what it does is it gives you this little arrow in here. And you can click and drag this arrow in order to extrude an object into three dimensions. So you can see I can click and drag this arrow to move this up and down. And you can see how your values in here are changing as you move that. So if you wanted this to be 10 millimeters thick, for example, you could move that up to this point right here. You could also come into the extrude toolbar and you can type in values over there as well. So you can adjust that in here. You can set things like a taper angle and other things like that. I don't want to get too far into that right now, but those are in here as options. And then you can also set if this is going to create a new body, which we'll talk about in a second or if you're going to use a shape to intersect or join or cut holes. And we'll talk more about that in a second as well. For right now, what I want to do is I just want to extrude this up 10 millimeters and I want to hit OK. And when we hit OK, what this is going to do is this is going to create a new body inside of Fusion 360. So up to now, we've really only worked with sketches. But a body, by definition, a body inside of Fusion is just an uninterrupted 3D shape. So all that means in this situation is we've created a 3D shape. It's now going to show up in the bodies folder. And there's other things in here we could talk about like uh, components and other things like that. I'm going to leave that for a future video. Um, I want this to more be a very getting started type thing. And so you can see how that's going to show up inside of your bodies right here. And you can flip that on and off in the same way that you can flip your sketch on and off. So all of these are in here and you can turn them on and off using your browser. And so now let's say that we wanted to cut some holes in the ends of this object. So let's say we wanted some kind of hole in the middle of this object. Well what we would do is we would use the same process that we've done before but we're just going to model the geometry that would make up the hole. So probably the easiest way to do this. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go up and click on the create sketch option and again we're going to select this plane right here, the flat plane. And what I want to do is I want to turn this body off. 
because it's blocking my view. So just go up here and click on the little eye in order to turn that off. And so in order to create our holes, what we wanna do is we wanna start by roughing out their profile. So in this situation, instead of drawing a line, we're gonna draw a circle. So I'm just gonna activate that by tapping the C key. And you can see how this is moving around in here and it's locking to different grid items. Don't worry about where you place it for right now because we're gonna use a tool in a second in order to move it. So for now, let's just say that we want this to be a, we'll call it a, sure, we'll call it an eight millimeter circle. So we'll go ahead and we'll hit the enter key in order to draw an eight millimeter circle. And you can see how what this did is this drew a circle um, that has a diameter of eight millimeters. Well, right now it's not centered in this tab and we need it to be centered. Well, there's a tool in here you can use in order to make that be centered called the dimension tool. And so what the dimension tool is gonna do is that's gonna allow you to set dimensions for different objects inside of Fusion. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this, we're gonna mouse over this corner and then we're gonna and click on it, and then we're gonna mouse over the center of this circle, and we're gonna click on that. And so you can see how when I click on that, I can move my mouse, and you can see how this will give me a dimension either off to the side here. So you can do a dimension this way, you can do it at a 45 degree angle, or you can do a dimension this way. And so in this situation, we wanna start by setting our up, down, offset. So I'm just gonna move my mouse out here, and you can see how what that does is that gives me a dimension off to the side. Well, one thing you might notice is when we clicked, this turns blue, meaning we can type in here in order to change what this dimension is. So because this is 15 millimeters, we want the distance between this point and this point to be seven and a half millimeters. So I'm just gonna type in a value of 7.5 and hit the enter key. You can see how what that did is that moved this down so that it's seven and a half inches off the top here. And so we're just gonna do the exact same thing by drawing another sketch dimension right here, and we'll type in a value of 7.5 right here. So you can see how now this is centered inside of this tab. And so now we've drawn a circle that's centered inside of this tab. Well, what I want to do is I want to take this circle and I want to make a copy of it so that it's right in the middle of this other tab. So now that this is placed, we don't need the dimension tool anymore. We're going to go up here under create and we're going to click on the button for create rectangular pattern. And so what the rectangular pattern tool does is that allows you to set or create multiple different copies of an object. And I'm gonna go ahead and minimize my sketch palette for right now and we're just gonna focus on this. Well, in this situation, what we wanna do is we wanna create a copy of this circle over here. So we wanna start by telling it that this circle is the object we wanna copy. And then it's gonna ask us to select our direction. So I'm just gonna click on select and then I'm just gonna drag this arrow over here. You can see how when I drag this arrow over here, what this is doing is this is creating a couple different copies off to the side. So we've set our direction by dragging the arrow. And so in this situation, we only wanna create two copies or we want there to be two total. So I'm gonna click the down button right here. And now what we have is we have our original and we have our new one. And so in this situation, because each one of these was 15 millimeters, 30 millimeters is the correct distance to move this in order to have it centered inside of this tab. So we're gonna go ahead and this copy has now been created, or we're gonna go ahead and click OK to finalize the creation of our copy. And so now we have two circles in here that we're gonna extrude in order to create our holes. So let's go ahead and click on the button for finish sketch because at the moment we've drawn out all the sketch information that we need. And so if we look at this, if we were to orbit, you can see how now you have two sketches inside of your model. So you've got the sketch that makes up your overall shape right here. And then you've got a sketch right here that has your two circles in it. Well, what we wanna do, if we turn this body on, you can see how these circles are in here, but they're not doing anything in 3D yet. So what we wanna do is we want to, we'll turn our body back off for a second, is we wanna select these objects and then we wanna extrude these just like we did before. So we can select them and then click on the extrude option and actually we need to go in here and select them from here. So I'm just gonna click on one of these circles 
and then I'm going to hold the control key and I'm going to click on this other circle so now we have two of these selected and we're going to click and drag this up and it doesn't really matter how far as long as it's longer than the shape or the body that you had selected and so if we were to click OK right now what that would do is that would create two new bodies that doesn't really help us because that's not what we want to do so I'm going to undo that and instead We'll just activate the extrude tool again. We'll select these two profiles and we'll extrude them up. And what I want to do is I want to turn this body back on. Well, when I turn this body on, what you're going to notice is these change color. And so the reason they change color is because Fusion 360 saw, oh, okay, these are now intersecting with this object right here. And so I want to, instead of creating a new body, I want to set the extrude tool to the cut operation. So if you look at this, the cut operation is going to allow you to cut holes wherever one object intersects another. So there's a couple other options in here as well. So intersect would only leave the geometry in the intersection there. Um, but in this case, we want cut. And so you can see how these are now red. Well, if I click OK while they're red, what that's going to do instead of creating new bodies is that's going to cut holes in your existing body. So you can see how now we have an object with two holes cut in it. So, and this is going to be kind of the fundamental way that we're going to create things inside of Fusion 360 is you're going to draw 2D profiles and then you're going to extrude them into 3D and you're going to use other objects in order to cut all the holes and openings. So that's kind of a basic um, introduction to these shapes just for fun let's go ahead and go in and round off the edges on this object as well so there's a number of tools over here for modifiers so what the modifiers are going to do is the modifiers are going to allow you to modify an existing shape in a lot of different ways well in this situation all I want to do is I want to select this body then I want to activate the fillet function and so when I activate the fillet function, I click on that, you can see how that's going to give me another toolbar and it's going to ask me to select the edges and faces that I want to fill it. And so basically what this is going to do is this is going to round off edges. So I'm going to select all of the edges in the object just for this example and you're going to notice that what you get in here is you get a little arrow. Well you can click and drag the arrow in order to set a rounding to all of these different edges. And you can see how because I have everything selected the whole object is getting rounded off by whatever distance I set. And notice that if you go too far you get an error message because it wouldn't make sense anymore you'd just be removing the whole object. But in this case let's go ahead and set this to something simple like 0.5 millimeters or maybe one millimeter to get us a stronger effect. And so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to click the OK button to finalize that. And so what that's allowed us to do is that's allowed us to very simply create a shape here that's got holes in it based on a dimension we set that's also got rounded edges that looks a little bit more um, looks a little bit more finished. So this is really going to be the baseline um, from which we're going to build all of the other different kinds of shapes that we create inside of Fusion 360. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Did you like this tutorial? What kind of tutorials would you like to see for Fusion 360 on this channel? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.